do this. Let's talk a little bit. Ben. I'm on Zoom here. So tell him, hello. Tell him to make it so I can mute myself. Okay, we're going to talk par four, making your first million dollars. I'm going to draw some stuff on this board behind me. I've got my little books behind me. This is my new place. So I'm excited. Yeah, yeah you just got to mess with that. Okay. Who here put your goal, what your income goal is? Because I did this poll on Twitter and I was very surprised what the average person who follows me thinks uh, has as their income goal. I put as the options 100 grand or a million. What's your goal here? What's your goal? You're not logged in as me, that's the problem. You should have used my actual Zoom login. Somebody said, Ty, show your bank account now or you're fake. You can just Google Ty Lopez Wall Street Journal. There's an article on me in Wall Street Journal from two weeks ago. Just putting $32 million into a publicly traded company to take control of it. That's fucking better. Wall Street Journal can't be wrong, can it? Somebody said, Ty, you owe me money. <laughs> People love to try to get money. Take this away and fix it. Okay, in another room. All right, so I'm gonna diagram out this. I've been doing this a few times, and so I'm gonna do a little bit today before I go to the gym. Is it possible to make a million bucks a year? I'm gonna tell you, this is gonna tell you the truth, okay? Most of you won't be able to because most people uh, give up too early. But I'm gonna show you how you could do it. If I had to start all over again, I'll show you how I would. This year, my holding company, Retail E-Commerce Ventures, is on track to do over $850 million in revenue. So I'm a little bit past making a million dollars. I made my first million dollar a year, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. Now I'm trying to break the one billion in revenue, but I'm um, hoping to do that by next year. So if you wanna see what I'm doing, you just go to Retail E-Commerce Ventures, or like I said, just Google Ty Lopez, Wall Street Journal and you can just read what Wall Street Journal says about me. Okay, someone says, Ty, you've told the same story for the last 10 years. No, 10 years ago, I wasn't doing 850 million in revenue. That's this year. <laughs> I wish I was doing 850 billion 10 years ago. Yeah, I haven't been fucking on social media really for 10 years, so. TikTok is the land of, what's the word? People I would bet against. <laughs> if I bet against who's gonna be successful in life, I would bet against motherfuckers on social media who comment a lot. I would win that bet, boy. I would take money from people. Take money. Okay. The dissection of a million dollars. Here's my first piece of advice to you. Everything that seems hard, break it into little chunks. Because if you don't break it into little chunks, you're gonna be overwhelmed. And I just break everything I want to do. Like, for example, I want to do a billion dollars a year in revenue. My companies that I'm the CEO of, the holding company, all the subsidiaries combined going to do 850 million. I need, to do a billion, you need to do roughly 2.7 million a day. So right now, the companies that I control are doing about 2 million a year, uh, 2 million a day. Two to two and a half. I own Pier One, I own Radio Shack, I own publicly traded companies, I'm the chairman of the board, NASDAQ companies. So I just broke it down that I need to do about 2.7 million and I watch it every day. So I watch what I'm doing. So, um, Ty, I wanna see the Lambos. You know what I got better than Lambos? The books. I got my books right here. Um, so whatever your goal is, if you want to make a hundred grand, that's an even easier thing to chunk out because you need to make literally like 300 bucks a day. Now I know people are all freaked out by $300 a day, but uh, it's not as, it was hard. Like 10, 15 years ago, you, there was no Shopify. There was no Amazon. There was no social media networks where 2 billion people were at your fingertips right now. Okay, so like it's so much easier if you wanna make a million dollars a year and you need to make roughly $3,000 a day. 
right? So this is all within the reach of people everywhere in the world. And if you don't think it's being done, more wealth's been created right now. You might hate capitalism, but it's made the wealthiest world ever, okay? And not everything's perfect in the world, but shit, would you rather be around in World War? My grandma was born in 1918. If you think life was tough then, the Battle of the Somme in France had a million casualties in one week. Like shit that we think is traumatic now, like, come on. I'm not saying there's no trauma allowed, but now people are have anxiety syndrome over what? Over your fucking dog or some shit like that? Like, for those of you who can toughen up a little bit, for those of you who can toughen up a little bit, the world will be yours. The world will be yours. And for those of you who are basement dwellers, kind of, you know, operating out of fear and skeptical cynicism, so well, like it's gonna be a tough game. All right, I'm coming on the Zoom now, Ben. You can come and do this. I'm just gonna be here for a little bit. I gotta go to the gym a little bit. So, no problem. Um, so there's three things. I'm gonna go, basically to make a million bucks a day, a year. Sorry, that's the goal. I just do it this way. Calculator, one million divided by twelve months. Oops. Divided by 12 months, 83,000 a month, divided by 30 days. You gotta make, uh, divided by 30 customers. Try to get 30 customers, build a business. You can make 83,000 a month by having 83,000 people paying you a dollar a day. That's much tougher, not realistic for most people. Or you can have one customer, one client paying you $83,000 a month. That's also not realistic. What's realistic is to have 30 people paying you $2,800 a month. Business owners, cosmetic surgeons, dentists, doctors, realtors, uh, brokerages, insurance brokers, financial agents, uh, they'll pay you to just manage their social media. So that's a simple thing I've been talking about since 2016. But I wanna talk about one thing first. By the way, you wanna see something cool? Just randomly today, I was looking through, I get all these filtered Instagram messages that I don't always see. So just, this is interesting. Um, so here's a guy who messaged me in August, 2019. Cody Fitzgeralds, F-I-T-Z-J-E-R-R-E-L-L-S. August 19, 2020, Ty Lopez, I bought one of your programs, SMMA, four years ago when you launched, and now my company is doing $400,000 a year selling Facebook, Instagram, email, and text marketing services to retailers. Now, I didn't even see this shit, <laughs> and the guy, I just saw it today, 2.30 p.m. Ty, it's me again. Now I'm doing seven figures, over a million dollars a year, with your SMMA course I bought five and a half years ago. I said, appreciate, he said, appreciate all you do. So what's your main service? We develop a piece of technology that uses data. Then we do Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, email, and SMS. So like this shit works. I've seen it. It doesn't work for everybody. And I'm gonna tell you why it doesn't work for everybody. Here's the three things you have to do in this world. If you only learn three things in terms of mindset to make you money, I'll show you the specific tactics I would use. Like I said, doctors, dentists, all those kind of people, I would build their TikTok and YouTube channels for them and I'd charge them $2,800 a month. Simple as business ever. And business owners are old and they're never gonna do it themselves. You think they're gonna build a TikTok, a cosmetic surgeon? And these guys got money, one new customer for them makes them many, many millions, of, I mean, many thousands of dollars from one customer. So here's the ABC. The first thing you have to do, these are things you have to commit to. Adapt, adopt, and persist. That's it, this is the story of the human civilization right here. And people don't make money because A, they're not adaptable. They're like, my mom and dad told me this is how you make money and I'm gonna stick to it. My parents told me this is the way to do it. So they're not adaptable. They're not adaption, evolutionary mach machines. You have to be an evolutionary, or you have to realize you are the product of an evolutionary timeline where humans have adapted. They call it adaptation. So most of you, to the extent you're willing to adapt, that's the extent of more money you're going to make. Number two, adopt, meaning basically copy what's working for other people. Pablo Picasso said, good artists, uh, uh, good artists copy, great artists steal, okay? So you find somebody 
who's making money in real estate, you find somebody who's making money with social media, and you know what you do? You literally adopt, clone their exact system, okay? And then the last thing is persist. Like people give up too easy. Now, like TikTok and Instagram Reels, it's like three second attention span. If something doesn't catch people's attention in three seconds, they're moving on. People aren't persistent like they used to be. So adapt, adopt, and persist. Now, the adaption thing I can't help you with. Just This is a genetic thing. Some people, if you do a hexaco personality score, some people are open. There's an actual ranking that scientists give personality types. One of them is openness to new experience. Some of you are not open to new experience. And I have a promise for you. You will be poor or middle class. Like period, like done, unless you inherit money. This is, we don't need to talk about this. <laughs> like this is, a, there's nothing to talk about. People with low openness to new experience. Like look at Elon Musk. It's like, he's open to new experience in the sense that he moved to a new country. That's adaptation. He's from Africa, South Africa. He moved to the United States. Immigrants are often more adaptable. And that's why if you look at the wealthiest people in the world, it's disproportionately immigrants. Now I know that hurts people's feelings when people are born in a country and they're you know nationalistic, but that's just the facts on the ground. You look like 50% of wealthy CEOs and companies that are built in the United States were built by people who are immigrants. First generation, sometimes second generation. So they're highly adaptable people. And what happens in countries, oftentimes people born there are the product of their parents and they're no longer adaptable. So secondly, adoption. It's not something people like to do because people assume the worst that other people are cheated to make their money. It was very common. It's like the first reaction when people saw my Lamborghinis were like, this dude cheated. This dude cheated. They actually did this study in India on there's huge wealth disparity in India. I'm talking huge. There's people who make $14 a day and the second richest man in the world. And the interesting thing is they, how do people cope with that disparity and they found there's five reactions people have to the success of other people. One of them is assume they got it unfairly. It makes you feel better about yourself. So one of the common things is that people, when they see the success of other people, they're not gonna copy it because they go, they cheated and I don't wanna copy a cheater. But if you look at Elon Musk, he didn't build Tesla. He copied and invested to take control of Tesla. He copied it. The ideas of the two founders who founded in 2003. Did he, he just bought Twitter. Did he start Twitter? No, Jack Dorsey started Twitter. Now, Elon Musk just closed today. He's, he adopted someone else's idea. It's right there. It's right there. And lastly, some of you will struggle with persistence. It's not something you're gonna do, you know? You're not a person that persists. And to the extent that you give up, they've done this test, they call it the marshmallow self-control test. They tracked kids from a very young age all the way into their like 40s and 50s. And they get, when they were like five, they gave them a marshmallow and they said, can you wait? You can have one marshmallow now, or you can have two or three if you wait till we come back. And the five-year-olds that could wait and persist with self-control continued for the rest of their life to have a better, more successful life. So to the extent that you are somebody that doesn't have self-control, bad habits, undisciplined, can't get out of bed, can't self-motivate, like you're done. You're basically done. And um, so for those of you, <laughs> who are not that way, okay, who, who aren't that way, who have, who here, just be honest, one to 10, how adaptable are you? Like, are you doing the same thing? Are you, do you get stuck? I see this, you see this a lot in like dating relationships. People are dating each other and they don't even like each other anymore and you're like, yo, why are you doing that? You know, why do you do that? Here's somebody, Josh Rich. I watched you in 2017. I made 11,000 last month. Thank, thanks to you, bro. What do you do? Are you doing an agency? 
What's the what's my thoughts on audiobooks? Um, I like audiobooks. I listen to them in the shower. I set my phone up out of the water, out of the reach of the water, and I literally listen to a book. I'm listening to the book Exercised, which is like this new health book by a pretty bad up guy, badass guy. Okay. Somebody said they are a what? A one, a 7.8 out of 10. Who's, how, how are you on, who's here a 10 out of 10 on discipline and persistence? Who's a one out of 10? That's the real one. That's kind of the one that ties everything together. Ty, I run an e-com agency. One of my clients just got featured on Shark Tank. Good, you're doing 11,000 a month, man. Next thing you gotta do is how do you do 11,000 a day? I remember when I made my first 100 grand, I was so excited. I was living in Raleigh, North Carolina. I moved out of a mobile home for the first time. I was living in a mobile home. And um, yeah, then I tried to figure out how to make 100 grand in a month. I was, and then I figured out how to make 100 grand a month. It took me a few years. Then I was like, all right, how to make 100 grand in a day? And then how do you make 100 grand in an hour? I've made a million bucks in an hour. I've made a, what I've not been able to figure out how to do yet is how to make a million dollars a minute. That's what Jeff Bezos is doing, but I want to know what your tax rate. <laughs> when I lived in California, is the highest tax rate in the world or in the United States, 52 and a half percent. So, okay. My favorite book about influence. There's a good book called Influence by Cialdini. Anyway, um, thanks. You legit changed my reality. You're from England. Yeah, if you're making, Josh, if you're making $11,000 a month using, you know, this system you learned from me with social media marketing, the, here's the thing, you, to scale a business, you have to first be able to do the business in a way that's not incredibly labor intensive. So the way that I do that to not be, is you need like one or two assistants. The second you make your first $10,000 a month, it's time to step it up and somebody you can do offshore you can do upwork you can grab somebody you know who helps you part-time and see if you can't um hold on a second dude i know what you guys are doing do that one it, it's okay have i read hegel yes the philosopher um okay so let's break this down i'm not i wish i had my laptop here it's a little bit hard to show but this is what you do google Plastic Surgeon, Beverly Hills. Okay. Plastic Surgeon, Beverly Hills. You will get, whatever, 50 plastic surgery offices. Go to their website. Click the link to their social media. The first thing you'll notice, 99% of these businesses, these plastic surgeons, they don't have a TikTok and a YouTube. They might have an Instagram and a Facebook page. Right now, YouTube Shorts, you can blow up a YouTube Shorts. I, I've just started posting some YouTube Shorts like five months ago. It's crazy. Now, I have a bigger channel, but even smaller channels are starting to get juice from YouTube. YouTube's competing hardcore with TikTok. So look here, here's my Shorts. If you, sh if you sort by um, most viewed, look at this. You can see it on my channel, a 94 million view YouTube Short. And you can post repurposed content. Here's 41 million, 32 million. These have brought me 500,000 followers in the last two months, four or 500,000. So do you believe in buying followers? You don't have to buy followers. I got 500,000. Go look at my growth on YouTube channel in the last two months. It's just from using shorts. So basically you go to these doctor's office, you build their YouTube channel, they'll pay you, get, send them a contract, $2,800 a month, and you will literally build their YouTube and TikTok. You can doc, look at Dr. Pimple Popper. She's built a 7 million YouTube channel. All she does is post little shorts of people, you know, getting their pimples popped and then people follow the channel. It builds her. She's probably, I guarantee you, she's making an extra two, $3 million a year from the fact that she's a cosmetic dermat or a dermatologist that's good at social media. So if you do this for business owners, I actually have a system that I call Million Dollar Master Plan. I'll show you how to do it, it's so easy. You record a Loom video for them, you email every 10 doctor's offices, and there's tens of thousands of these in America, by the way, and you don't even have to live in America. Send them a Loom screenshot, introduce yourself, say, look, like, 
I looked at your website. I know you're a great cosmetic surgeon or a dentist or a lawyer, but your social media is horrible. I looked at one Beverly Hills plastic surgeon that had 27 YouTube followers, 27 YouTube followers, uh, subscribers. So what I do is I come in and what you should do, you get 30 doctor's offices paying you $2,800 a month. You're making a million bucks a year. And if you do a lot of the work yourself, it's crazy high margins. You could be in an 80% profit margin business. I started people teaching people in 2016 how to do this, but back then you had to run Facebook ads for them. And Facebook ads are expensive for the doctor. Now you can grow them for free. You know, now you're growing their channel for free. So somebody said, there you go, Ty, I love her hair. When I had my hair longer, everybody uh, noticed. <laughs> Somebody says, is it a rental or a lease? You know what's funny? It's like people were very obsessed with my Beverly Hills place, whether it was a rental or a lease. Now I teach people how to, you can go out and become a millionaire through Airbnb leases. It's funny. Everything that people, cynical people make fun of, there's an opportunity to make crazy money. It's insane. It's literally insane. I remember when I started doing social media in 2012 and I was telling people like, Online education is gonna be bigger than college. I saw the trends. It was trending up into the trillion dollar industry. Okay, and everybody's like, no, college is the way to go. Ty, it's a scam. And I'm going, bro, just wait. I was just early. Now, 10 years later, like even Harvard has online education. So when you, cat, when you see people skeptical about your ideas, that's where all the money is. In fact, one of if you tell people your idea and they think it's a good idea, you're too late. The problem is the reason most of you don't make that much money is you're literally following trends that are too late. Like everybody's doing it. So you feel good. You have the camaraderie of following the crowd like a sheep. Like people are like, oh, affiliate and marketing. Well, shit, affiliate marketing was working in fucking 2001. And do it still works now, but like 2001, that was the trend. But people are on such a low level of adaptability and so afraid to be outside of the trend. Even those of you that think you're trendsetters because you're like on TikTok, that's not a fucking trend. You didn't catch a trend. It's like trend, you, they had 179 million downloads last quarter or last month, I forget, on TikTok. $19 billion was spent on marketing by TikTok, the Chinese last year. Like you're not cutting edge, you're not cutting edge. But those of you who are on the frontier, you know, it's, it's kind of like with real estate, people are like, oh, I'm gonna buy real estate and do flips. Well, flipping was like hot in like the 80s. Yeah, you can still flip. I just did a Puerto Rico flip, bought it for 4.4, sell it for 8 million. But the money now is in more cutting edge combinations of things like combining, buying residential real estate and something more cutting edge like Airbnb. But Air, even Airbnb will eventually be surpassed with something like WeWork. You take WeWork, you know how WeWork works? You basically have an app and you get office space anywhere in the world. You can do the same thing with residential. That's the cutting edge. I got some German friends, they built like WeWork, but instead of for office buildings, for residential. And they sold it at Goldman Sachs. I forget, they did like a recap for took $50 million out of the business. So which stuff is the most cutting edge? The most cutting edge thing is kind of combining different things. So you take like Uber and you, that's what's been happening the last two years. Grocery delivery has been hot. You had gorillas out of Germany be the fastest growing startup in the world, right? And they combined like, a little bit like Uber Eats with grocery stuff. And it was like five minute delivery. Now that, there's too many of those and now they're going broke and there's new ones. So each of you has to really like, that's why I said adaption. That's why I tell people, I'm like, read a book. People say, oh, I remember when I told people in 2012, people were like, I was like, I read a book a day. People were like, no, scammer, nobody does. Elon Musk, his sister just posted. Elon grew up reading two books a day. Two. So I, I like I under <laughs> I didn't read enough myself. Like that's how he built his empire, man. All right, I gotta go in a few minutes. I'm gonna let Ben come on. Well, I'll put a link up. I'm gonna put if you any of you. I'm doing a 
actually a live workshop for this, but if any of you wanna go into the, the mastermind mentorship that I have on this building this income by getting businesses, specifically doctors and dentists and lawyers to pay you $2,800 a month to build their TikTok and YouTube using shorts and reels and stuff, um, just go to tylopez.com slash start. I gotta go in a second, slash start. And if you go to Tyler, my website, is it on the homepage there? Should be right there. You can't read my writing. <laughs> there you go. Are you doing that? Mm -hmm. Okay. What's some quick questions we have? Somebody said they can't read. It's backwards because I have a reverse camera on. <laughs> I like, I like putting it reverse because then it was like an IQ test. All the people too stupid to figure out what I'm saying, they can't join. What was the question here? Best paid marketing now. Change my life, Ty. Oh, you can change in the camera settings? That's good, there you go. Is the industry, insurance industry worth getting into? Sales is good getting into. Like, it's good to get into, like people don't like direct marketing and MLM, network marketing stuff. I'm like, why not? It's like 500 bucks, costs less than going to one class in college and 80% of billionaires started in sales. Mark Cuban told me he started delivering, you know, like selling trash bags door to door. Elon Musk is a sales guy. People don't realize, people always think, oh, Elon Musk is this and a technologist. Yeah, a little bit, but he's in great part a sales guy. In great part, you'll never make money if you don't know sales, you know? Affiliate marketing, I was talking about that a second ago. All right, let me see something. Interesting news, so let's talk for one second. So Elon Musk, the way of the billionaire, this is a different conversation. For those of you already making a million bucks a year, uh, in your business, the next step is to start buying companies. That's what I do. I've evolved, you gotta adapt and evolve, right? So I used to start stuff from scratch, but look at Elon Musk, he started his first business from scratch, he sold a map technology, right? Like the first kind of map quest, Google Maps. He sold it for, I think he says six to 20 million, I forget. He put that money into building PayPal. PayPal, he exited for, and by the way, he didn't start PayPal, he merged into it. So that was his first M&A deal with something he didn't start from scratch. You can, oh, you this one, you can't even comment on TikTok, can you? So he did basically, you know, a merger with PayPal. Then after PayPal, he then bought into Tesla by investing into Tesla. And of course, Tesla turned into a freaking for every $100,000 he invested into Tesla, he's made $900 million back. And what he's doing right now is the same thing. He just bought Twitter. I think he closed today. So I'm still making money from the SMMA course from 2017. You should get in the new updated version where I'm talking about YouTube shorts and TikTok. That's even better because now you go to business owners and you're like, instead of you having to spend money on Facebook ads and pay me, you won't have to do Facebook ads because I'll help you go viral on YouTube and the YouTube shorts and stuff. What do you think of door-to-door -door solar panel sales? It's good. I got a lot of people, you know, that follow me that do that. Sales is good because even if you don't do it forever, you build the most important skill, which is persuasion. All of life is persuasion. Everything you want in life, it hinges on your ability to persuade. It just does. And people don't like that because people are like, I remember I had a friend, I said, bro, you have to be able to, like he wanted to find the love of his life. I'm like, you're not very persuasive, you know? I'm like, you're not very persuasive. And he's like, well, I want a girl to just love me for who I am. I'm like, that's not how it works, man. Which part of you? Humans are multifaceted. So at the end of the day, all of you are in the persuasion game. You have to persuade yourself to get out of bed and be motivated. You have to persuade customers because they have, always you have competition. People, money can always flow away from your business to some other business. Tillman Fertitta, one of my mentors, he's a, worth $6 billion on the Forbes list guy. He owns the Houston Rockets. He told me he's, you should read his book called Shut Up and Listen. And he's like, in a competitive world, money can flow. You think you're the only product, you're not. There's always a, what economists call a comparable, you know, or a substitute. 
And so you can always have to persuade. And some people don't like that because humans are narcissistic. So we're like, I love myself. Why do I have to prove that I'm worth, you know, I'm worth something. And now we live in a world where it's like, just love yourself, always be confident in yourself, you know, which is bullshit. You shouldn't always be confident in yourself. Why should you always be confident in yourself? Are you telling me insecurity didn't evolve in the last 750,000 years of homo sapiens as a functional adaptive process? Of course it did. Don't listen to the modern world. They're gonna lead you astray. The modern world is full of wolves in sheep clothing. And sometimes I say stuff and people don't like to hear it and I'm going, well, I'm a sheep in wolves clothing. To the extent that you try to overcome evolutionary processes, you will always be wrong. Always. So you're in our evolution, we've evolved to have some confidence and some cynicism towards ourself. When it comes to making money, we've learned to be skeptical about other people's resource allocation skills. But at the same time, some people have evolved to be a little bit more optimistic. I, I'll tell you what I would do also, if I was 18 years old, I would find every infomercial, every network marketing, every book on get rich, I would try them all. Almost every get rich scheme I've ever seen, as long as you don't have to spend that much money on them, literally almost everyone has a, even a glimmer, some hint of truth. So shit, you just amalgamate all the different things you learn from all these things people. I'll give you an example, Carlton Sheets. He was the first guy doing an infomercial on how to buy real estate. I was living in Raleigh, North Carolina. People, he got, I think he got kicked off the air because people said it was a get rich quick scheme, but he was teaching you how to do, buy properties and rent them out. I spent 300 bucks on it when I hardly had any money and I bought my first properties in Raleigh, North Carolina. I still have them to this day. I'm positive the, the rents paid off the mortgage for me. I get a free houses. So, to the extent that you've evolved to be, you've evolved to be both an optimist and pessimist at the same time, you know? So let go, man, let go of your preconceived notion. If you think you know exactly what political party is right, just let go, assume maybe you're wrong. If you think you know whether Trump is good or bad, let go. In fact, I like what, uh, I like what Charlie Munger says, you shouldn't, have the right to argue any opinion unless you can argue the other opinion better than they can. I thought that was a great thing. I'm like, that is the secret to life. Can you be well-rounded? The problem in the modern world, you see this with politics, you see this on Twitter, you see this in Republicans and Democrats, you see this in capitalists versus socialists. Nobody can argue the other side. You see this in ultra feminism and versus ultra right-wing beliefs. I'm going, is anybody walking the middle path anymore? And usually down the middle is correct, but it's not as sexy. It's not as sexy. Sexy is taking a strong position. Sexy is going viral for saying something stupid. You don't go that viral for telling people the actual balanced truth, you know? So be balanced. Making a million dollars a year is not that wacky. It used to be wacky. If you lived in the 1840s, making a million dollars a year was like what, what Vanderbilt was making. Now you have something, I forget the numbers, there's like 10, 20 million Americans who are accredited investors. That means their net worth is more than a million dollars, not counting their primary residence. 10 million. And I think it's even higher. Maybe it's, it might even be as much as 20 million. That's like... If it's 20 million, it's like seven, eight percent of the population. Remember, some of the population is like five years old. So if you take the subset of people who are of earning age, it's a much higher number than you think. And that's multi million, that's a million dollar net worth. You don't even have to do that if you're just starting out. If you're 18 years old watching this, figure out how to make a hundred grand a, a year, you know? So, I'm sorry, do you need to wash your hair? This is coconut oil in my hair. By the way, you talk about a scam, shampoo companies. Fuck that. All these motherfuckers losing their hair. I'm like, why don't you shampoo your hair a little bit less? How do you think Native Americans had beautiful hair? Samoans have beautiful hair. What do you think they did? Fucking got some 
pharmaceutical Procter and Gamble shampoo and <laughs> wash their hair all the time. You're following the like recommendations of the company selling you. That's what I said. You have already been sold, you know? People, I'll come and sell like, let me show you how to build a marketing agency where you could legit make six to seven figures a year. People are like, I'm very skeptical. And then I'm like, well, look around you. Your whole life's a scam. You're like, everything's a scam. Your job's a scam. <laughs> education's a scam. You spent 15 years in school paid for by taxpayer dollars. You don't even know how to do your taxes. You don't even know how to, you know, literally don't know how to read a balance sheet. You don't know how to, what a cash flow statement is. You don't know how to do any acquisition of any asset. I'm going, what are you talking about? Everybody who's worried about being scammed are the ones that are so deep in this. You're, you're fucking addicted to your phone. The average person now spent like an hour a day watching scrolling through, which is fine for me. I'm like a drug dealer. I'll sell, but I don't take the own supply. I don't spend an hour on my phone. Like, fuck that. Everybody's deep, deep down. Everybody's very sure that who wins the presidency will have a big effect on your life when it will never have anything. The only time presidents remotely have an effect on your life is if there's a draft. What Putin's doing, drafting people will affect Russians because you're sent to war. Last time the U.S. had a draft was in the Vietnam War. It does not matter that much if Donald Trump or Biden is president. You do not, your life is so, <laughs> and I know people don't like this because it doesn't go viral as much as me saying. It's just, you are focused on nothingness. What about the fact that you have not one good daily habit that you do consistently? Don't you think that on a probability scale is a much higher probability of why your life is shit. Guys are like, well, I can't get women because I'm too short. I'm like, bro, it's not, it's, women have an algorithmic brain that you go up and down built on multifactorial process. So if you're short, go make a fucking million bucks, you'll be fine. But, you know, it's like, that, that requires personal responsibility and why do you want to do that when you can blame the system? All you watching like Netflix conspiracy theories, like people very obsessed with like Jeffrey Epstein, did he kill himself? Why does this matter? There's a lot of bad motherfuckers that kill themselves or are killed by others. Let it go. But what's the most viral thing on Netflix? Jeffrey Dahmer. It's like every woman I know is watching it and dudes. I'm just going, why? Why? Reduce this to one minute a year. Allow yourself one minute a year for conspiracy theories. And just because the true conspiracies is like the US food system. We know for a fact they're putting corn syrup in everything. We know in fact they have feedlot confinement cattle. We know for a fact all the eggs you eat, which is in so many things, is coming from factory fed chickens that are never out getting chlorophyll, eating grass, bugs. We know for a fact the wheat and most of the things you're eating is on depleted demineralized soils. So that's why I said, don't worry about the scams about your income. The biggest scams are already fully adopted by society. Two trillion dollars in college debt. People are getting college degrees. As I always say, people are getting college degrees in English. So I ask them, what's your fucking native language? English. I said, so let me get this straight. Somebody tricked you as an English speaker into getting a degree in the English that you are a native speaker in and they charge you twenty dollars to $30,000 a year, put interest on top of it, give you a 20-year loan, and you fell for that? Like, you are a sucker, man. You are a sucker. Now, people say, oh, you need, a, you need an English degree to write. Hemingway didn't have an English degree. You ain't a better writer than, than Hemingway. I can tell you that. I can tell you that. Run for president. Never. No good people run for president, so you don't have to worry about it. There hasn't been a good person run for president in the history of the United States. Name one. Just give me one. I just want to hear who is the one. Who is the one? Good people are interested in other things, man. Somebody said, biggest scam in life is to put all effort into being a millionaire, but you leave this world with nothing. That's not true. Because that is not true. If you, if you garner resources, money is just re scarce in-demand resources. If you garner them, they have, it has beneficial effects 
on your children and great-grandchildren, it continues to cascade down, both in the health and the happiness. Now, you can overdo it if you just let your kids inherit it, but it's not true. You can have a more of a positive effect if you have resources than if you don't. It's not true. But it sounds good. It's just like, why would you want to make any money if you just die with nothing? Well, that's nihilistic approach to all of life. Why do you want to do anything then? Why do you want to even get out of bed? A nihilist really is like a suicidal type belief system because if nothing's worth anything, then why do anything? You know, what is that? Man, somebody figure out how to hack the TikTok. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. Um, should I start streaming since I played too many video games? Why not just play less video games? Talk about, yeah, exactly. Streamers talk the most shit about systems. I'm like, my friend started Grand Theft Auto. He thanks you for your service. The person who's done the best off video games is, is a friend. He's a producer of the Spider-Man movies. He thanks you for his 500 million or whatever he made. He thanks you for your service. Like uh, People, they say slavery doesn't exist or maybe there's less of it. I'm like, how about economic slavery? But see, the difference is it's not true slavery because you're choosing to like spend three hours a day playing video games. I stopped playing video games in like 14. I was like super into them. Then I like fucking grew up and I was like, what the fuck? Now you got like, like okay, online gaming, great, great. What could be greater for society than a whole bunch of people with no muscle mass sitting around playing virtual games with a bunch of other dudes it's kind of like porn. Porn is just, by the way, this is all good news for those of you who want to make money because most people, your competitors, are going to be watching porn, playing video games, or being depressed and being anxious. So you can just uh, do anything and do better <laughs> than everybody else. You can like literally do anything. Now, get out of bed, <laughs> go to a business and be like, I will do your YouTube channel. I want $2,800 and they're like, Holy shit, are you a real fucking human? Like, okay, you got out of your bed? Great, I'll hire you. It's so, it's insane. Just getting out of bed uh, can help you make a million bucks a year because most people can't. Me versus Mark Zuckerberg in MMA. Oh, I'll take that bet. <laughs> I've been doing like, martial arts. I started judo when I was 12. I do Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I'll definitely, definitely. Mark Zuckerberg will trade net worth for the winner. I'll take that bet all day. Bare knuckle, man. But I saw him doing Muay Thai. He's a brand newbie. He's a new, you can tell, it's just like playing basketball. You can tell on somebody just by how they dribble the ball if they're any good. Zuckerberg. But hats off to him. You know, hats off to him. It's good. BJJ, Jadoka, yeah. I mean, now I don't do judo. I kind of evolved and I mean, who, wouldn't anybody here take a chance? I don't even think, I mean, Zuckerberg is more a brain guy. When did you get a hair implant? <laughs> do I look like I have hair implants? No. I'm just gonna start going with it. I'm like, yeah, man. I got, I went to this Beverly Hills. Actually, I should get a Beverly Hills doctor as a customer. So I'm gonna charge him $28,000 a month. And I'm going to send them a whole bunch of customers. I'm going to start telling everybody, this is a wig. I went to this Beverly Hills thing. And he's going to get so I'd say, give me $3,000 of customer I sent you. When I got my LASIK surgery for my eyes, they did a post and it, it broke their call center. So they're like, can you do a post again? It's pretty cool. But um, two new Aventadors or 50 full bookshelves. I'll take the Aventador Lambos. Because... I'll just buy the books after. Are you saying for my whole life? Why would, why would that be a question? Ty, 100 books? Are you saying for the rest of my life I can never read again if I took the Lambo? That's a different question. I just wait till the next day. Where do people hang around most likely? People scoring high on anxiety or dark track. The worst people in the world are people who leave. This is actually real science. Google people who leave comments. People who leave comments on social media are statistically the most mentally deranged people on the planet. They did a huge study on that. They have dark dyad traits, worse than the dark triad. Dark triad's psychotic, 
Machiavellian and narcissistic. Dark dyad is like Mac, uh, people who are basically not sadomasochists, that's more sexual, but just people who are sadistic, who take pleasure in the pain of others. Remember, a large population percentage of the population you run in, even somebody in your family, I guarantee you they take pleasure in your pain. And people forget about that. Sadism is a gene that's passed on. Look at Genghis Khan, the man was sadistic. When he killed people, you know, he would sit, he would do a party where he would sit on his enemies until they slowly suffocated as he would, him and his, his henchmen were eating their food. That gene, you know, that, you know, Genghis Khan is uh, the great, great, great grandfather of about 1% of the world. It's insane. No one knows the exact number, but like one to 7% of Asians come from Genghis Khan. So that gene for like fucking sadistic behavior and that's why you have friends in your life that will, or supposed friends and family members that will go out of their way to make you feel bad. That, going to your question, is a big part of what happens on social media, especially in comments, you know? Oh, it's insane. Google, Google Genghis Khan. That's why on social media, what will do the best is always negative videos. Like now people are, Kanye West is more viral now because he lost a billion dollars or two from this, you know, easy thing. Then when he was on the rise, because people are always gonna be more excited about your downfall than your rise. That's, that's just, I saw it when I was doing, making a million bucks a year, not many people talk shit about me. When all of a sudden you go up and you do a hundred million dollars a year, the whole world's gonna be pissed. You know, the sadistic nature of mankind will come out. You will see that in your life the sadistic nature of people. So you gotta be very, that sadism gene is the worst gene. It's worse, in some ways it's worse than, you know, a psychopath. They're, they're kind of separate, but comorbid traits. All right, I gotta go. Tylopez.com slash start, we'll pin it here. Um, come into this program, I got the first live workshop that I'm doing tomorrow. You can do that as an upgrade. For those of you who are not cynical, not skeptical. If you're skeptical, just keep doing what you're doing. Whatever you're being fed, please do it. Just do it. For those of you who want to step out from the masses, just try something. Try something. Okay. Talk to you later. I got to go to the gym. All right. I'll do a quick uh, finish up. Okay. okay. I will see you later. And so can you, uh, you, Ty, let me remove the spotlight. Um, okay, can everybody hear me? Sweet. That was pretty, pretty good from Ty. Always a good Yeah, it's not bad.